So for this project, I wanted to do some sort of dimensional portal that I see in sci-fi movies like Stargate, Hellboy, um, the ones from Doctor Strange, etc. Um, I think they're pretty cool, and the idea of like you know going to another dimension through this wormhole is is really fun. So I had the idea to do a piece of concept art around this theme. So first, I started with a sketch using Procreate. I mainly just plopped down on the couch with the iPad, turned on some Netflix and started sketching. Uh, I forgot what was on, probably like Lost in Space or Stranger Things, I'm not sure. Um, whatever it was, it was just kind of background noise that I kind of just have on while I'm drawing. Now I kind of had an idea of what I was doing in my head, so I got the sketch done pretty quick and then I brought it into Photoshop just to give it a quick gradient remap adjustment layer. Now this photo was from an empty floor of an agency that I used to work at. It looked kind of cool and it looked sci-fi-ish, like it was pretty neat. It was pretty large and it was rather open with these giant pillars. So immediately I imagined like the space with more damage and distress and maybe some rubble and maybe like an evil scientist was testing some sort of weapon or like a portal or something to another dimension. But kind of like, you know, this evil concept around it and just, you know, interesting color and mood and just to kind of play up this dimension and the lighting around it. So I had to paint out some things replace some imagery, duplicate some pixels, and uh, kind of help the symmetry a little bit, but still keep it unique. But overall, just kind of clean up the plate to make it a little more um, beautified or glamified or whatever you want to call it, just to make it a little more eye-pleasing and aesthetically pleasing. Now, when it comes to masking, I create all my masks up front to save time. I didn't want to mask out everything, just the areas that I knew the light would affect the composition the most. So the walls, the pillars, um, the ground, so like certain things and not everything just to kind of save on the masking. Since I wanted to put a new sky in the background, I needed to mask out the buildings and stuff from behind the windows. Now traditionally, if I went through window by window and painted them out, like that would take me much longer. So I did a trick where I converted the whole image to grayscale and I used levels to crunch the values down so only the windows were the brightest part in the image and the rest was just black. So basically this is creating like a fake mat that is just an image that I'm going to later paste into the channel of a solid color fill. By doing that, I can just now go through and select each window and fill it in with white and kind of clean it up. Now normally filling and painting always takes more time because you're kind of scribbling and looking for edges and sometimes you mess up and whatever or you leave a little piece in the mat. So I use the approach of just make a selection and fill it and just keep going through window by window and it's much faster and it's much cleaner. Once that is done, I don't bother with alpha channels. I turn the selections into selection layers with a solid color fill so they're immediately available right in the layer panel. I save time by doing that and I don't like to bounce in and out of different panels for something that is gonna interrupt my workflow. So at this point, I was ready to jump in and start turning this image into something cool. Now color correction is probably one of the most important things that you do in Photoshop. It transforms any image. So first I added in a sky. The sky drives the ambient to the scene. So like if you have a sky, all the color is gonna push itself through the room. I popped in a simple gradient fill layer, chose a preset that I had of a night sky. And at this point it's mainly set up so I can always change this later. Like depending on how the image progresses, I could just go back and put in a new sky and kind of redial it in. Not everything's set in stone here, I'm just kind of building up a base layer to get a mood going and a feel going so I can kind of continue and rolling with that. From there I do a quick night from day lookup table adjustment layer, or a LUT, and that already pushes the mood into something creepy and that's kind of what we're going for here, like ominous, creepy, kind of like bright lights with shadows. And then I just toss on some simple curves to balance the light and the shadow out, add some contrast to it. And since I wanted the portal to be the main light source in the scene, I needed to set up the light so it hit the pillars from the center of the scene. So I selected my mask for, for the pillars, and then I did another gradient fill adjustment layer where I can kind of shift it around and see where it's going and make it hit the pillars the right way. And really in general, light is just gradients with different falloffs and diffusions. So you can fake a lot of stuff with gradients in Photoshop. But I feel like this is a good start for the plate and the basic feel. As we continue, the look will evolve and change, and depending on what I feel like doing, it's just going to change. So Now it's time to build this crazy portal. And one thing about Pixel Squid is that the workflow is very quick. 
and flexible. And sure, I could go into 3D and start modeling stuff and rendering stuff and spend hours in there, like, you know, rendering out passes and like bringing them into Photoshop and then have a workflow that is bouncing back and forth for a concept. And in general, I love that. But here I wanted to kind of maximize what I was doing in Pixel Squid to see what I can do and what was in their library to inspire the concept. First of all, they have like literally thousands of objects. You can find pretty much everything that you're looking for and you could get really creative of how they're used. One really cool feature is their light box. This allows you to create a collection of objects for a project that you're working on that has easy access inside Photoshop. So all the things I'm searching for, I could kind of put them in a folder so that when I'm in Photoshop, I could just pull the objects right out of that folder and into my comp. So it saves a crazy amount of time. So I grabbed a bunch of weird tech parts that I found and then I jumped into Photoshop. I popped open my Pixel Squid plugin, opened up the light box and started grabbing objects. The amazing part of this tool is that you can rotate any of these objects and find that perfect angle that you're looking for in the perspective, like really quick. So you can kit bash really fast and between that and using the transform tool and using your imagination, like is really fast and it's fluid. So, I mean, I love it. Not to discount 3D because I love 3D too, but for doing concept art and for working very quickly, if I don't need a very specific 3D model, like this works great. But if you need cars, trees, any sort of daily object in life, and there's a lot of weird stuff too, you'll find it in the library and you could use it really quick. But at this point, it's pretty much rinse and repeat. Find objects, bring them in, match the perspective, blend them into lighting, do some color correction, and build up your scene. Now that a bulk of the work is done, we have our plate, we got our portal built, and it's time to finesse the image. This involves like painting in and sculpting the lighting to complement the scene and the composition. Um, you know, this composition's not super complicated, it's pretty straightforward. It's one point perspective with the portal in the middle of the screen, which is your main light source. That light is getting bounced around and casting some shadows, and I guess it's not even really like a portal anymore, it's this strange alien energy ball or energy source, I don't know. But uh, we're going to play off that for a little bit. But I use some texture tricks with the polar coordinates filter, which works great for like wrapping patterns into a circle, so if you have a seamless pattern tile, you can use this filter and it'll kind of put it into a circle and then you could um, distort it from there. Of course, adding flares is sort of a necessity. And then adding in details and highlights, LEDs, smoke, more texture blending for tricks and effects. And then in the end, some final color correction, adding some noise. And then at this point, I'm pretty happy with it. It was a great little experiment. And I'm going to stick a fork in it, kind of call it quits here. So Pixel Squid, super fast, super flexible. It reduces the amount of time of searching for stock that is 2D stock and trying to find the right image with the right lighting, the right quality, and the right resolution. Everything that you bring in has a base lighting, so it's very easy to add highlights and shadows. And it's just a really cool tool. Thank you for watching. My name is Dave Pusciuto. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on Pixel Squid.